Hello Year 4, so it seems that Varjak has met Jalal. Let's see what Chapter 8 brings. Varjak awoke at the foot of the wall. His head was pounding, his paws aching. It was, wasn't quite light yet, but the night was almost over. The fall from the tree must have knocked him out. What a dream! He wondered if he'd ever have another like it. He shivered. It was cold out in the open and the grass beneath his body was wet. He stood up, shook the moisture from his fur and looked around. The view cleared his head instantly. Outside was like nothing he'd seen or even dreamed of. The Contessa's house stood on top of a high hill. Beneath it was a broad green park. Beyond it, away in the distance, was a city. Stretched out under the open sky, shining like silver in the pre-dawn light, the city was a huge, mad jumble of shapes and sizes. It had tall towers, gleaming steel and glass, but also squat brick houses, dark with chimney smoke. Wide open gardens jostled with narrow alleys, sharp pointy spires topped soft curved domes. Concrete blocks loomed over bright painted billboards. They were all there together, side by side, each one part of the whole. There was so much. He couldn't take it in. All he could hear from here was the wind rustling through the treetops, but down in the city it looked noisy and bustling, a place that never went to sleep. His whiskers twitched with a mix of energy, excitement, danger. His heart beat faster, just looking at it. It seemed like a city where anything could happen, and probably did. A place you could do whatever you liked and no one would stop you, where you'd be able to find anything you wanted, even a dog. The terror of the night before, the fight with the gentleman's cats, it seemed a long time ago and very far away. There was sadness in his heart for the elder poor, deep sadness, but his grandfather had trusted him with a mission. It was his duty as a blue to save the family and Varjak intended to see it through. He ventured down the hill. It was steeper than it looked and soon he found himself running, almost rolling down the slope. But it was a joy to stretch out in the open. A splash of sunshine lit the horizon. He'd never seen a sunrise before. And the sky outside was alive with streaks of amber light. The sky flashed past his eyes as he sped up, sprinted to the bottom. He bounded over a fence at the foot of the hill and into the park. Around this time, back in the Contessa's house, the family would be waking up and licking each other clean. Varjak grinned. He hated washing, and already there was a satisfying build-up of mud between his claws. Next, the family would obediently munch their food out of china bowls. It would be the gentleman's vile-smelling caviar today. But now that he was outside, he wouldn't have to eat anything he didn't like. He could choose what to eat and when to eat it. After eating, the family would go to their litter trays. Ha! Varjak crouched by a tree. No litter tray for him today. It felt good. It felt natural. It felt, he thought, like it ought to feel. This was how it would be in the future. It was going to be the best time of his life. He'd return from the city with a dog, whatever a dog was, and defeat the gentleman and his strange black cats. Then he'd lead his family out of that stuffy old house into this wonderful new world. They'd all say he was a proper Mesopotamian blue, a true son of Jalal. They'd offer him every kind of honour and reward, but he'd, heard he'd turn them down. I did it for the glory, for the family, he'd say humbly, and they would cheer him even more. Varjak wandered further and further in his happy days. He barely noticed the fiery shades of sunrise burn out, leaving the sky the colour of cold ashes. A violent sound cut through his thoughts. It was like shrieking and roaring at the same time, and it scared him. The sound came from a black road that circled past in the distance. He crept towards it, ears pressed against his skull, and then he saw them. 
It was a column of fearsome monsters. They were rolling down the road, roaring at each other and everything around them. Huge monsters made of metal with sharp edges all around. They had yellow eyes at the front and red eyes at the back. They moved on round black wheels which turned so fast it made Varjak dizzy and they belched a trail of choking smoke behind them on the wind. What do you think these are? Could these be dogs? What were the Elder Paws words? These monsters were big enough to kill a man. Their breath was foul, their sound was deafening and they filled his heart with fear. This was it. He was sure they were dogs. He'd found them. A hard, tight ball of terror formed in Varjak's stomach. How was he supposed to talk to these monsters? They didn't look as if they'd stop for anyone, let alone a kitten. As he edged closer to the procession of metal beasts, all his happy thoughts about the future faded like a false sunrise. Slow time. Moving circles, shadow walking. He shook his head. How were these words supposed to help? Why had the Elder Poor trusted him with such an impossible mission? Why hadn't he chosen someone older and stronger, someone like Julius? Julius might know what to do with a dog. Farjar did not. The quest was too hard. It was impossible. The ball of terror in his stomach turned to a heavy lump of despair. A drop of rain splattered on his shoulder. Varjak grimaced. He hated water in his fur. At home, he would rush in through the cat door as soon as the weather changed. If only he could do that now. He glanced at the high hill behind him. He couldn't see a house from there, from here. A gust of wind sliced across his face. The sky darkened. A storm was coming. He could feel it. Shelter. That was what he needed. Once he was safe from the storm, he could think about the dogs. But there was no shelter in this wide open park. There were only trees. Solitary trees with no leaves swaying in the wind. They wouldn't keep him warm and dry. Rain came down from the darkening sky. Thick, wet rain that dripped into his fur, weighing him down with water. He tried to shake it off. But once it started, the rain kept coming. His family were right. Outside was no place for a cat. It was no place at all. In the distance, behind the naked, shivering trees, he glimpsed something that he'd missed before. A small wooden hut, a shelter. He fought his way towards it. The rain whipped into his eyes. The wind pushed him back one step for every two he took. The ground was turning into a churning sea of mud. His paws slipped and sloshed wildly. Splash! Varjak fell into a pool of oozing mud. Dark, dirty water seeped out of his mouth. He was covered in brown and green slime. He could feel it squelching all around him, soaking into his skin. The wind howled at him. Like a wounded animal, too far, it howled. You've gone too far. A claw of white light slashed the belly of the sky. What a fantastic sentence. I'm going to read it one more time. A claw of white light slashed the belly of the sky. There was a moment of horrible silence. And then the earth juddered with thunder, shaking beneath him as if it would break in two. Help me, Jalal, he cried, but only the sky answered, bellowing again. With angry thunder, making him wish he hadn't spoken, Varjak wiped the slime from his eyes and dragged himself to the hut. It smelled of soggy timber and had no windows, only a door. The door was closed. He pushed. It moved, but only a crack. Desperate, he flung himself at the flimsy wood that stood between him and the shelter from the storm and the door swung open. Bye, you fool.